Hi and welcome. This is the fourth part of a video series on delegates. In this video, we'll look at the funk, action, and predicate built in generic delegates. For more content like this on advanced C sharp topics and much more, please consider subscribing and please ring the bell so that you can be notified of future content released by this channel. So, before we dive into this topic, we must have at least a basic understanding of generics. Generics is a topic that we'll explore in detail in upcoming videos, but for now a basic understanding will suffice. So what is generics? In c -sharp version 2, generics was introduced. Generics makes it possible to, for example, design classes, methods and delegates that defer the specification of one or more types until the class method or delegate is declared and instantiated by client code. Use generic types to maximize code reuse, type safety, and performance. A developer can create generic interfaces, classes, methods, events, and delegates. In this video, we'll look at three types of generic delegates that are provided in the c -sharp language, namely Funk, Action, and Predicate. All of these generic delegates are available in the system namespace. Let's look at an overview of each of these built-in generic delegates before we look at basic code examples demonstrating their implementation. So let's first look at Funk, in this depiction, we can see the basic structure for a Funk delegate. The T represents a placeholder where the developer can pass a type parameter in order to strongly type the parameter relevant to the encapsulated method at compile time. The IN keyword in this context means that the parameter type is contravariant. We are not going to be discussing covariance and contravariance in this video because these topics were discussed in detail in the previous tutorial. For information on covariance and contravariance, please use the card available in the top right-hand corner of your screen to navigate to the appropriate video. A link to this video has also been included below in the description. There are 17 Funk delegates available in the system namespace. This Funk delegate, for example, can be used to encapsulate a method that contains no parameters and returns a value. There are 16 more Funk delegates. Here is a Funk delegate that contains one parameter and returns a value. Here is another Funk delegate that contains two parameters and returns a value. Funk delegate definitions always return a value the return type is always defined in the last type parameter, and the available Funk delegates allow for 0 to 16 parameter type definitions. Note that the last parameter declared in the Funk generic delegate defines the type of the returned value of the method that the Funk delegate encapsulates. The out keyword in this context means that the return type is covariant. The action generic delegates allow a developer to encapsulate a method that can have 0 to 16 parameters and must not return a value. The predicate generic delegate encapsulates a method that contains one parameter and returns a value that must be of the Boolean data type. A predicate delegate represents a method that defines a set of criteria and determines whether the specified object meets those criteria. Let's look at code examples using each of the built-in generic delegates, i.e. Func, Action and Predicate. 
At the end of the tutorial, we'll look at an example of using an extension method that takes a predicate as an argument. Let's start by looking at an example using the func built-in generic delegate. Let's create a .NET Core console project. I'll name this project and solution func action predicate examples. Let's create a public class named math class and add one method named sum. The sum method contains two parameters of the int data type and returns a value of the int data type. This method simply returns the integer result of the sum of two integer arguments passed into this method. Let's instantiate the math class in the main method. Let's use the generic built-in func delegate to encapsulate the sum method. All type parameters passed into the func delegate are of the int data type. The last type parameter represents the return type and the first two type parameters represent the method's parameters data types. So as you can see through the use of generics we have made our func delegate compatible with the sum instance method. We have strongly typed the func delegate with the int data type the parameter types and the return type. We can therefore use the func delegate to encapsulate the sum method. Let's write code to execute the delegate and then code to write the result to the screen. Let's test the code. Great! We can replace the sum method with an anonymous method using the delegate keyword like this. An anonymous method is, as the name suggests, a method that does not have a name. Let's test the code. Great! We can further abstract the method by removing the delegate keyword, the return keyword, the curly brackets and the parameter type definitions. So here we have now reduced the functionality of the sum method to a lambda expression. A lambda expression is an anonymous function which as discussed is a defined function not bound to an identifier. We previously created the same function using the delegate keyword. A lambda expression is a shorter way of representing an anonymous method. Lambda expressions were introduced in C-sharp version 3 along with Link. For more information on Link, please navigate to this URL. Let's test our code. Excellent! To further understand the func generic built-in delegates, let's create our own imitations of a few of the built-in func delegates. Let's call our delegates func2. and we can now replace the func keyword with func2 in our code. Great! But we don't need to do this because appropriate generic delegates are already available to us in the system namespace. Let's create a slightly more complex example where our delegate encapsulates a lambda expression that performs the functionality of adding two operands of the float data type together, then multiplies the result of this operation by a value that is of the int data type. Great! Let's create a more practical example where our Lambda expression adds a bonus to an employee's annual salary.
great. So let's look at some examples using the Action Generic built-in delegate. So in this example, let's create a Lambda expression that accepts fields for an employee record as arguments and outputs the employee details to the console screen. Note that the action delegate is used to encapsulate a method that does not return a value. So in this example, we'll output three fields of an employee record to the console screen, ID, first name, and last name. Great. Let's add an annual salary field. So to do this, we can use a different action delegate to accommodate this new field. Let's update the Lambda expression accordingly. Let's add a gender field, which is of the char date type and a Boolean field representing whether an employee is a manager or not a manager. So to achieve this, we need to use a different action delegate that can accommodate the two new fields. Excellent. So let's use an example where we'll use the predicate built-in generic delegate. Let's first create an employee class. Let's create a generic list that will contain four objects of the employee data type. Let's add some employee objects that contain made up employee details to the employees list. Now let's create a method that will filter the employees list based on criteria that will be passed to the method in the form of a predicate. So this method simply traverses the employees list. If employee items within the list meet the criteria of the predicate passed into the method, the relevant item is added to another list that is returned to the calling code once all the items in the original list passed into this method have been traversed and evaluated. So let's call the filter employees method and pass in the employees list, followed by the lambda expression, which is encapsulated by a predicate delegate. Let's say our lambda expression in this example is used to return only male employees. Let's write code to traverse the list returned by the filter employees method and use the display employee records action delegate, which I have now renamed to display employee details just for better readability, that we created in the previous example to write the relevant employee records to the console screen. Let's test the code. Great. Let's alter the logic of our predicate so that we return only details for employees that earn less than 45000 a year. Great! Let's alter our logic so that we only return employee details for employees that are managers. 
Great. So we can abstract this code even further through the use of an extension method. So let's create a public static class named extensions. Let's copy the filter employees method to our extensions static class. Let's make the filter employees method public and it must also be static. Then to finish making this method an extension method, all we need to do is add the this keyword before the first parameter. The first parameter is defined as a generic list that is strongly typed with the employee user defined type. So the filter employee extension method should now automatically be available on generic lists that are strongly typed with the employee user defined type in our main method. If you are not clear on extension methods, don't worry, extension methods will be discussed in detail in upcoming tutorials. Basically, through extension methods, the developer can add methods to existing types without creating a new derived type, recompiling or modifying the original type. So let's see if we can access the filter employees method on the employees generic list. And there it is. It shows up in the IntelliSense as expected. So we no longer need to pass the employees list to the filter employees method as a parameter and all we need to do is pass in the lambda expression. Let's test the code. Great. The system.link namespace contains a number of extension methods. Let's demonstrate how we can use an extension method which is available in the system.link namespace to achieve the same result. Link is beyond the scope of this tutorial. We'll look at link in detail in upcoming videos. Let's include a directive to the system.link namespace at the top of our code. The where extension method is available on the generic ienumerable type. The generic list type implements the ienumerable generic interface. So now that we have added the system.link directive, the where extension method should now be available on the employees list object. So let's replace the filter employees method with the where method. The where method returns a value of type i enumerable, so we must convert our result to a generic list using the toList explicit conversion method. Let's test the code. Great! So let's finish up by using the func delegate that we created earlier to add a bonus to the employee annual salary fields of each of our employee objects stored in the employees list. Let's test the code. Excellent. I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial on the three built-in generic delegates, namely func, action, and predicate. If so, please consider subscribing for content on advanced C-sharp topics like this and much more. And please ring the bell so that you'll be notified of newly released content from this channel. This code can be downloaded from GitHub. A link to the relevant repository is available below in the description. If you feel you have gained value from viewing this video, please give it a thumbs up. It really does help support the channel. Please share any of the videos produced by this channel with anyone you feel may benefit from their content. Comments are of course welcome. Thank you and take care.